Monday, mate. Hey, Sean. <laughs> Finally. Hi, mate. I'm good, mate. Hi, Finally, mate. Third, third time lucky. How are you doing? Good, mate. Good. Um, apologies for the false starts, eh? Mate, it just meant I had an, an extra day listening to the album again. Oh, good. <laughs> mate, thanks ever so much for your time. Really appreciate it um, because I know you and the boys have got so much to look forward to uh, with the album. Congratulations. What a fantastic uh, release that is. Yeah, it's um, it's good fun, isn't it? Like, I think that's the best way to describe it when you hear it back. That um, you know, it all it all kind of worked out. We, I think we took a few risks to start with in the early stages. We didn't know how that was going to work out, but um, I think this album it was a little bit more kind of throw caution to the wind, and it was a bit more fuck it. Let's just let's chuck the lover on there. Let's you know, let's just see how it comes out. Because you got, I think it's got to be careful. We're always a little bit sort of tongue in cheek with our with our rock and roll, but we're. You know, you don't want to cross that path where you start sort of becoming the darkness, you know, or or um, it's 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 difficult. It's a, it's a fine line. So I think it comes across as a good homage to a lot of rock and roll and a lot of sort of stuff that we like to do. You know, well, there's definitely um, a big tip of the hat to some um, some of the, the huge bands of yesteryear. There's there's bits of Kiss I can pick up in there, and obviously ACDC and 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 even the seventies vibes of, of sabbath and uh, purple which is just fantastic i love condolini rising at the end it's just an absolute oh, yeah. <laughs> 70s ripper eh? yeah that's uh it's become a little bit of a an ongoing thing on our last couple of albums now so um i don't know if you if you heard the last one reptilian overlord we we had you know the title track at the end of the track and that was the 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 long play um and it was sort of like we need to keep the tradition going. So that was where Kundalini Rising came from. It was sort of like part two, you know. Um, but that was fantastic. When when I first heard that on the demo, Tommy had actually already done, you know, on a demo level, all of those little breakdowns and the the flute and all that sort of stuff in the middle. So it was it was it was prepared, ready for that. It was hilarious. Fantastic. Well, I got to talk to Tommy. Um when you released Reptilian Overlord, because again, that was another fantastic album. But I have to say, I think you've just tipped it with this one. This is even, this is even more fun. I love it. I've had it on nonstop since it was released. Um, I'm trying to review it, but I'm not doing very well because I just keep listening to it as a fan rather than a reviewer at the moment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it was. Um, look, at last Reptilian. I think the songs we we all enjoyed the songs and. Um, I think that was that was the first sort of foray out out of not having Jaws in the band, um, and the whole thing was kind of you know Tommy and I, um, and we had um, Ricky Ray doing the drums for it, who was just basically studio drumming for us. Um, so we didn't sort of really have a drummer per se, but um, that one was, I, I guess, we spent a lot of the resources on Mark Opitz at the time uh, as a producer, and. Look, you know, I think we got a little bit out of Mark, but there's probably a lot that, you know, we, we wish we, we could have got more out of him. So I think this time around what we did, we we spent a lot more resources on getting a really good mix. And we thought to ourselves when we were when we were starting to demo this stuff, look, you know, we'll get it we'll get it um tracked locally because that's fine. We can just get that track, get it tracked to tape. Um and Headgat did a great job of that with Finn. Um, but let's get a really good mix. So we started like thinking about who's all this stuff that we love. You know, we we love seventies Thin Lizzy. We love, you know, we love Kiss. We love, you know, the Stones. We love Led Zeppelin. And we started to sort of say who did that stuff back then in that era. And then you know, Ron Nevison's name kept coming up again and again. And I made a little bit of a like a Spotify playlist on a lot of this Ron Nevison stuff. And I was like, Tommy, you got to listen to this shit. It's like it's exactly how we want this this album to sound um so we just tracked him down he's just he he, he does he's got a, a service where he just you know online he just has himself there you send the stuff to him um and instantly he got us you know he was um when the first couple of tracks started coming back you know he was emailing just you know it'll just be a picture of paul stanley I'm like so he, he understood exactly where we were going and the end product you can actually that same playlist you can put some of our songs in that playlist and they had that that same treatment that same sound to them so it, it worked it, you know it came, it came across really well 
well, you couldn't have found a better guy to do it with a with a um, a pedigree that he had with those bands he worked with and with the tracks that you've put together on that album. We've had three singles so far, haven't we? Um, the Lover. Uh, what was the one you released last year, which was an absolute bolt out the blue because I never knew new material was coming. Um, when you want something, oh, when you me, want something from me. Which has mm. just got the most incredible guitar solo. I love that solo. In that I'm track. just, um, Sean, I'm just here actually before we got on this meeting. Um, I'm just here like learning how to play it <laughs> so we can well, actually play it live. That's quite handy because we'll talk about why you need to learn it shortly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. you've, you've got the launch, sing- uh, the launch show coming up in the iconic Gershwin, uh, which would be a great night. I wish I could get over for that one from Perth, but uh, sadly not. Um, so three singles so far. Is there any plans to release some more on the album? Because there's so many on there that could work as singles. Yeah, I, I think um, I think the idea was we were going to maybe come back to when you want something from me, but uh, I'm not sure. I think um, we've sort of done the plan up to the to the album launch, and I don't think there's a plan past that with another with another single. So I think now it's just a matter of hey, let's chuck this one out there as a single as well, and see if the record company wants to wants to support that um but look the thing is these days it's a bit different the way you sort of can promote the record and all that sort of thing it's it's just a matter of i guess if we wanted to push a song and chuck it out onto the socials then that's how we'll do it you know um and and for us it's probably a lot of those things where people unfortunately don't listen to albums like they used to listen to albums you know it's like it's presented start to finish a side b side um in the in the world of digitization and spotify etc cetera, etc cetera, people just sort of pick and choose so unfortunately what happens with an album you get sort of the popular songs or the singles get heard a lot and a lot of the b sides don't so we probably chuck out maybe one of the b sides as a a single and um, yeah do that next. Cool. it's funny i listen to um triple m at lunchtime and, and they always have that um vinyl track when they play a vinyl track right from start to finish and you forget today oh, yeah. it was Black yeah, Sabbath. I've heard that. It was Paranoid today, Black Sabbath. And you just, you know, you hear all those wonderful tracks. Was it really? The That's cool. Yeah. When Ferry was wearing boots and, and all that. It was just incredible to hear. But then you forget how good yeah. that album was from start to finish. So tonight I'm going to chuck it on my headphones and have a little listen when I go for a walk with yeah. the dog. And I love that. Yeah, and yeah. Then you're right. It does. And we're it, stuck in playlists. We are. And it's a, it's a loss. I mean, I, this, this could be another whole conversation we can have, but the art of just you know sitting back and listening and listening to that that audio quality on vinyl it's it's just it's it's a lost thing you know it's and that's why we we're big on putting it, it out on vinyl we actually have it you know first and foremost mastered mixed and mastered for for vinyl that's that's how we want that sound to be so the best way you can hear our stuff is going to be on on vinyl but you know the world we live in obviously you've got to get it all digitized and everything like that as well yeah, well, of course... We even um, got it released on CD. We, we've still got the CDs going, too. Brilliant. Well, I, 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 I still have... CD. I always like to buy the physical copy, and I never, ever play them. Um, I'm starting to revamp yeah. my um, my vinyl collection again. Um, since I've been in Australia, I've been buying some of the classic Australian albums, and uh, I'll be adding adding yours as well to the, the collection, definitely. Nice, yeah, yeah. But um, So the one disappointing thing with Reptilian Overlord is... You released it, and then this horrible thing where the world ground to a halt, and and it never really got to see the light of day as a, as a, a performed as live as it should have been. Um, so yeah. you've got the launch coming up at the Gersh on the thirteenth of October, I believe. Thirteenth um, of October, yeah. Plans to do some more shows after that? I think so. Yeah, I mean, nothing like doing a, a lot of shows and a tours and all that sort of thing off the back of an album. Um, so I think for us, it's just sort of. You know, let's do the album launch and then see where things take us. I mean, we we've we've done Europe late last year. Um, I think we'd like to get back over there as well. Um, give those guys something. Um, it's being released um as well over there on um TVI records in Spain this time. So it's a bit of a different approach. We've actually got a label releasing that over there. Um uh on vinyl as well so i think it's it, it it's always good to to do it an east coast tour we probably do that it's been ages since we've been over to you know south australia and out west 
So, I mean, that's that's got to be on the cards. But um, bloody airfares, they're not cheap now. Oh, I know, it's disgraceful. That I try to get over Melbourne when I can to see some live music, catch up with friends. And on the same, it's just, yeah. well, it's even easier for me on my own. But for you guys as a group trying to get instruments here, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, you know, you don't want to say, okay, we're going to put the tickets up to, you know, 100 bucks a ticket. <laughs> it's just, we're, you know, we're a pub rock and roll band. It's just, this doesn't work. So, yeah, look, I mean, we're hopeful that those things will work out and we, we find a way to, to get back over. And, and even something like New Zealand, we haven't done that for years. I think that's well worth the trip. Yeah. So how did songwriting go? Obviously, Reptilian Overlord was out. Was it almost um, during the pandemic? Was there a lot of writing going on? Yeah, uh, it was probably a few things were written before Reptilian even came out. Um, so we we tend to have, well, the last couple of albums, we've tended to have a really long lag between writing songs and actually having a release. Um, you know, whatever whatever the reasons for that are, there's, there's usually a few things that get in the way. Um, but, yeah, look, all of this stuff was written long time ago i'm I'm thinking for this album probably three three years ago um and we had a whole lot more i mean we probably we probably had about 20 tracks and we left 10 on the on the uh the editing floor wow so uh, yeah i mean I, it was talk once once upon a time of like grabbing a whole heap of those and just doing a whole you know a whole album of things that never made it to the albums um you could probably make one easily Fantastic, but uh, but you know sometimes we 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 sort of th- I mean there's a song that's been going around that we tried to to re-record this time that didn't make it on Reptilian. We thought oh well it's got to make it on the next one and it got pushed out again. You know we sort of think it's like a it's like a footy team or a cricket team. It's like oh he's you know he's in form then he's out of form. You know so a permanent twelve man. Inside. Yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah didn't quite make the tour. Well, uh, obviously, you guys are, are re- regularly writing, and, and I can't see it being long before uh, uh, another album will be out if you uh, keep going at this white rate. Yeah, yeah. Well, h- hopefully, you know, hopefully it's um, not that long between drinks. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot still there, and I, I think I think what it is is it, there's a after we had Jaws as our drummer, and we we moved on and, and got Wolfie. It kind of opens up a whole new avenue of of songs that we can sort of try, you know. Um, he's a different sort of drummer, um, which you know opens up a few few different sort of styles, and and that's what we've tried a little bit more on this album. So like things like Bad Girl, you know, City Streets, um, even The Lover to a sense. But um, and it's you know that, as I said at the top of the interview, that's it was a, a bit of a gamble to you know do we do we go that way. It's always this sort of thing where you don't want to sort of piss off your, you know, your hardcore rock and roll fans, but then you also want to um, progress musically with with what you got and what you want to do. So I think it's, I think it did, it did well. It worked well for this album. We had a, a good balance of both. Perfect. Well, I've just remembered we just touched on uh, vinyl. I have actually got a copy of Terra Casanova on vinyl. I forgot oh yeah, that. yeah. I forgot. I have played it once, and I, I, I always get scared of scratching by them. So it gets played and put away, and then I sneak off to listen to it digitally again, so I don't have to damage it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be, uh, I'll definitely be chasing down Reptilian Overlord and um, and and this backseat rhythms as well on vinyl as well for my collection. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Be, uh, but um, if I can just uh, finish off with a few general questions just to wrap things up, because I know it's a little bit later for you over there. Um, my restaurant question, cool. I like to ask, um, you could invite three guests, uh, past or present, to join you for a bit of dinner. Who would you have sit around the table, musicians from the music world? Uh, so so live or dead? Live or dead, yeah. Um, I, think I'd, I think I'd go Phil Linnett, then Lizzie. Um, I think he'd be good fun. He'd, be, he'd probably um, be spilling the wine everywhere. Um, who else would we have? I think I'd go uh, old mate uh, Hemo from the Powder Monkeys. I'd like to see him again. Um, we better get a live person, huh? Um, probably, probably someone like Ozzy Osbourne. I think would be good too. Oh, that would be an interesting dinner. 
Bill and Ozzy, Jesus. <laughs> that would be <laughs> <quite me. laughs> Well, um, you stole the thunder through uh, my next question, which is what was the last album you listened to right through? Last album I listened to right through. Jeez, I can tell you, I can tell you exactly what I listened to here. Yeah. This is the this is the good thing about technology now, mate. Yeah, the old days you'd look at the coffee table and see what vinyl's been left out last. <laughs> um Rumors, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, nice. Mm. Ah, Love that album. Yeah. Is there a bit of eclectic music for you in your in your collection? Oh mate, I I I love I just love a, a good good song, a really good album, good sounds. It it's it doesn't need to fit into a real, you know, genre for me. You know, I I I go pretty far and wide with, with what I listen to, really. Um, well, here's, here's your chance you know, to I, uh, here's your chance to confess all. Let me know one of your guilty pleasures <laughs> in the collection that people wouldn't think would be in your collection. Um, okay, uh, this is all pretty stock standard. Um, Survivor. I listened to Survivor's oh. album the other day. I mean, how could Survivor? That was um, the one before I the Tiger, which got um, uh, Young Blood on it. Oh, okay. That I was kind of the pre court. That was kind of the precursor to Eye of the Tiger. You could see where they were going with that. Well, I found um, a single on vinyl the other week, and I, I brought a suitcase back from um, the UK when I shot back over this year, and I found the single of Eye of the Tiger, and the B-side was a track called uh, Take Me on a Saturday, and it's even better than Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've been getting into a bit of Curtis Mayfield as well. I, I like that sort of funk sort of stuff. Um. God, I, I mean, I go away a lot. My my son does go karting, so we're constantly on the road, going out to the country and all that sort of thing. So I've got, you know, this playlist here that we always, um, oh, a lot of Van Halen. We listen to a bit of Van Halen lately. Excellent. Um, there's one that I I, I want to tell you about. Tom Petty. Good driving music. Good driving music, big star. There we go. I've been getting into big star. Ah. Um, well, again, I love that stuff. Well, their tracks, I'm, I'm going to chuck some of that on tonight because it's something different to listen to. Um, I was I, I interviewed Sarah McLeod the other week and she was listening to the Carpenters. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> good call. I know, there you go. Oh, blue oyster, bit of blue oyster cult, nice, very nice. I'm liking this demo secret collection. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to pick this the stock standard stuff here. Uh, Rush, big fan of Rush. You know what I love, and I, I love this, and it gets to this point of the of the playlist. Um, I've got a banjo. I'm trying to teach myself, so oh, wow. I've been getting into. I've been getting into listening to a bit of bluegrass. You know, I, nice. I'm loving really good bluegrass. Just that banjo sort of stuff. So I'm learning how to how to do the roll, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, I picked it up ages and ages ago and, you know, it was going okay. And then I put it down. I haven't done it for years and years and years. So I'm trying to teach myself. I oh, want to be that guy that can just... On, on the, on the on sitting sit, on the veranda. Sitting on the veranda in the rocking chair. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to get a bit of deliverance on the next Casanova's album? You never know. You never know. There could be <laughs> something like that. Squeal, piggy, squeal. Anyway... <laughs> um, the final question if you could be credited with writing any song ever written what song would you choose oh jesus um i reckon i'd love to have written thin lizzie's bad reputation nice that's never been on my um on my playlist for that answer so i'll add that to the playlist yeah. that's one of those songs what a songwriter he was. What a storyteller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so good. Fantastic. I'm going to add that to the list. Um, Damo, I just wish you all the best with the album. Um, fantastic. I, I will tell you now, it's going to be in my top three Australian releases 
um, by the time we get to the end of the year. It's I love it. It's fantastic. Oh and wow! You're right. It's Thanks, bloody Sean. fun. Thanks, mate. It's that's, so that's... fun. Um, you can have it on around the house. You can have it on in the car. You can have it on your headphones, and it's just a an album just puts a smile on your face all the way through it. Yeah, cool, mate. That's that's awesome. Thanks, thanks so much for saying that. My my air guitar has improved vastly just on that album. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate. Um, hopefully we'll see you when we um we get over your way. Be great to catch up, and um, we'll make sure we uh, get plenty of advertising up for any of the tours and shows that you do around the uh, around the country and around Europe. Uh, and we wish you all the best for the Gershwin show as well. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Brilliant. Third time lucky we got there in the end. We did. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Thanks for your patience it. on that. It's just it was just a busy week. It's all good. Thanks so much, mate. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me, mate. Cheers.